In the dimly lit chambers of memory, nestled between the pages of television history, there exists a moment. A moment when the grandeur of opulence and the clash of wills converged in a dazzling symphony of glamour and power. It was a rendezvous with the year 1981, a time when screens flickered to life with the birth of the iconic TV series, Dynasty. As the echoes of a bygone era reverberated through our living rooms, we were unwittingly swept into the captivating world of the Carringtons and Colbys, where every gesture dripped with extravagance, every word was a weapon, and every feud carved new lines into the sands of drama. Amidst the artful dance of power and betrayal, the characters strode through mansions adorned with crystal chandeliers, their emotions as intricate as the lace that graced their evening gowns. The pulse of Dynasty surged with energy, its narrative tapestry woven with the threads of ambition, jealousy, and the intoxicating allure of wealth. The tension crackled like electricity, and we, the audience, were mere voyeurs to a spectacle that demanded our undivided attention. Do you remember that moment when you first stepped into the captivating realm of Dynasty? The glint in Alexis Colby's eyes as she schemed and maneuvered the authoritative presence of Blake Carrington as he navigated the treacherous waters of business and family. The elegance of Crystal Carrington as she grappled with love and loyalty. Each character etched a place in our hearts, leaving behind a trail of unforgettable moments. In the grand tradition of serendipity, we found ourselves entangled in the labyrinthine corridors of power, privilege, and passion. The series became a mirror, reflecting both the excesses and vulnerabilities of human nature, inviting us to ponder the complexities of our own lives as we marveled at theirs. So, as we traverse the corridors of time, let us peel back the layers of trivia and anecdotes that have enriched the legacy of Dynasty, unearthing those hidden gems that once sparkled on the screens of yesteryears. From casting tales to behind-the-scenes whispers, let us delve into the captivating narrative that unfolded both on and off the set. And there, within the folds of reminiscence, we uncover the essence of Dynasty, a shimmering blend of glitz and substance, of indulgence and introspection, forever etched into the annals of television lore. As we embark on this journey of rediscovery, may the opulent intrigue of the Carringtons once again grace our thoughts and evoke cherished memories of that first enchanting encounter. 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 In a twist of fate that could have altered the course of television history, Elizabeth Montgomery, famed for her role in Bewitched, emerged as the top contender for the iconic part of Crystal Carrington in the 1981 TV series Dynasty. Ultimately, it was Linda Evans who stepped into the role, bringing an unparalleled grace to the character. However, little known is the fact that a pilot was discreetly filmed, featuring George Peppard as the enigmatic tycoon Blake Carrington. Regrettably, producers deemed him lacking the paternal aura the character demanded, leading to John Forsyth's eventual casting. Behind the scenes, an intriguing figure emerged as Linda Evans' stand in during filming, a young man with cascading blonde locks, a surprising choice for a role typically filled by women. This unconventional stand-in was none other than a close friend of Ms. Evans herself, injecting a touch of whimsy into the glitzy proceedings. Meanwhile, in a fierce competition that saw over 400 actors vying for a pivotal role, Michael Nader triumphed as Dex Dexter. His victory illuminated his acting prowess, adding an extra layer of charisma and complexity to the vibrant tapestry of Dynasty. In the world of Dynasty, as in life, the unanticipated choices and battles behind the scenes often shape the narratives that captivate our screens. These lesser-known anecdotes shed light on the delicate alchemy that forged the captivating drama we remember today. With Elizabeth Montgomery's alternate destiny and Linda Evans' unexpected stand-in, the saga of Dynasty becomes more than a tale of opulence. It becomes a testament to the unpredictable interplay of chance and vision in the realm of television. Chin, chin, chin. Sparkling deceptions, the allure of faux glamour on Dynasty in the shimmering realm of 1,981 seconds television opulence, Dynasty reigns supreme. A gilded world where power, wealth, and intrigue intertwine seamlessly. Amidst the lavish backdrops and couture-clad characters, an unexpected revelation stirred gasps among ardent viewers. Nolan Miller, the mastermind behind the show's sartorial elegance, had, in fact, orchestrated an elaborate masquerade when it came to the dazzling jewelry adorning the leading ladies. While famed jewelers like Tiffany, Harry Winston, and Edward of Beverly Hills lent their illustrious pieces to grace the necks and wrists of the show's actresses, Miller himself took the reins on crafting a symphony of sparkling embellishments. 
A twist that left many a fan agog, Miller's candid confession exposed a sparkling secret. Every gem, every bauble that graced the screen was a product of skillful fabrication. Authenticity bowed to artistry, and the faux gems radiated a brilliance that was, indeed, fool's gold. But what of those other Hollywood sirens who might have inhabited the iconic role of Lady Ashley Mitchell? As casting rumors swirled like champagne bubbles, the names of Raquel Welch, Angie Dickinson, and Ann Archer shimmered on the horizon. A tantalizing glimpse into an alternate reality, these would be dynasties conjured visions of a show redefined, a tale retold with an alternate brush of star power. Yet, the annals of dynasty lore harbor a final twist that rivals the very drama it portrayed. The specter of cancellation cast a long shadow, and amidst the tumult, two titans of the series, Joan Collins and Michael Nader, signaled their intent to depart. A narrative precipice loomed, and as the storyline climaxed, a shocking tumble over a balcony sealed their fates, mirroring the very cliffhangers that had entranced a global audience for seasons prior. Dynasty, a tapestry of opulence and intrigue, mesmerized the world and seduced fans with its shimmering veneer. Behind the scenes, glittering jewels turned out to be an exquisite ruse, an emblem of the show's mesmerizing artifice. As the curtains fell on its grand saga, the tales of casting dreams deferred and character exits scripted and the stars further underscored the timeless allure of this quintessential 80 seconds drama. The character of Adam, a counterpoint to Dynasty's female villain in the realm of 80 seconds television drama, no rivalry shone brighter than that of Dynasty's feuding femme fatales, Alexis Colby and Crystal Carrington. Yet, behind the scenes of glittering gowns and soaring power plays, a strategic move was orchestrated to introduce equilibrium to this captivating chaos. Enter Adam Carrington, the enigmatic and cunning male antagonist, whose purpose was meticulously calculated. The character of Adam, played by Gordon Thompson, was deftly woven into the narrative as a counterbalance to Alexis, portrayed by Joan Collins. As the saga unfolded in 1981, this calculated maneuver aimed to both amplify the melodramatic dynamics and cater to the era's changing tides of gender roles. John Forsyth's unwavering vision, Blake Carrington. The faithful patriarch is the grand patriarch of the Carrington dynasty. John Forsyth's portrayal of Blake Carrington anchored the series with unwavering authority. Yet, amidst the tumultuous tales of wealth and power, Forsyth's personal insistence on Blake's fidelity became an intriguing facet of the show's narrative. From the outset, Forsyth advocated for Blake to stand as a steadfast and committed husband, a decision that diverged from the temptation-laden paths typical of television magnates. This choice not only enriched the moral complexities of Dynasty, but showcased Forsyth's dedication to his character's integrity in a world defined by excess and indulgence. A blossoming extravagance, Dynasty's floral finery at the pinnacle of its success. Dynasty was renowned for its opulent sets and lavish displays of wealth. A particularly lavish expenditure made headlines, revealing a staggering budget allocation of up to $25,000 per episode for fresh floral decorations. Orchestrated by visionary producers, this floral extravagance added an extra layer of decadence to the show's already resplendent backdrop. However, as seasons progressed, financial constraints prompted a strategic pivot. The opulent blooms were replaced by the allure of silk, a pragmatic yet resourceful choice. These intricately crafted artificial flowers not only maintained the aesthetic allure, but allowed the series to maintain its visual splendor while adhering to tighter fiscal reins. In the annals of television history, Dynasty's 1981 iteration stands as a tapestry woven with calculated character dynamics, a commitment to character integrity, and a dynamic blend of opulence and ingenuity. These interwoven threads created a spellbinding saga that continues to resonate with audiences, a testament to the intricate artistry that shaped the lives of the Carringtons and Colbys. And Colbys. And Colb in that intriguing world of the 1981 TV series Dynasty, where power plays and family drama entwined, a little-known fact adds a twist to the narrative. In the initial drafts of the show's scripts, the two pivotal families that captivated audiences, the Carringtons and the Colbys, nearly bore different names, the Parkhursts and the Corbys, respectively. This subtle alteration could have shifted the dynamics and altered the show's iconic legacy. But it wasn't just names that held significance in Dynasty. The indomitable character Alexis Colby, portrayed by Joan Collins, wielded verbal barbs with precision. 
One of her notable tactics involved mispronouncing her rival Sable's name as Sybil, a calculated move to undermine and belittle. Alexis' manipulation extended to her own family. She amusingly twisted Crystal's name to Kristen. Sammy Joe became Sammy Jean, and she addressed her sister Caress as Cassie, all designed to provoke her loathed sibling. Delving deeper into the cast, one poignant note is the presence of Rock Hudson, whose role in the series marked his final foray into acting. Hudson's last appearance as himself was on the premiere of Doris Day's Best Friends, alongside his longtime friend Doris Day. Tragically, Hudson's passing on October 2, 1985, due to AIDS, raised concerns in Hollywood. At that time, AIDS was misconceived to spread through casual contact sparking apprehensions about Linda Evans' health after a kissing scene with Hudson. The incident even spurred a minor panic about intimate scenes in the industry. In a show renowned for its opulent lifestyles and cutthroat power struggles, these lesser-known anecdotes underscore the intricacies that colored the world of Dynasty. The intersection of names, mispronunciations, and real-life implications intertwine to paint a more complex portrait of a series that still continues to captivate audiences, offering a glimpse into the glamour and tensions of the wealthy elite. So, as the legacy of Dynasty endures, remember that even in the most opulent settings, the subtleties and behind-the-scenes stories can shape the narrative in unexpected ways. And thus, the drama, both on and off-screen, remains perpetually riveting. As we bid adieu to this exploration of the captivating world of the 1981 TV series, Dynasty, I invite you to linger a moment longer in the lavish corridors of memory. Like jewels in a treasure chest, the moments we've shared with the Carringtons and the Colbys sparkle with timeless allure. The opulent drama, the swirling intrigues, the power clashes, they've all left their imprint on our hearts. But it's not just the glittering surface that has held us spellbound. It's the intricate threads of humanity woven into the characters' lives. Their victories and defeats, their loves and losses, mirror our own journeys in ways we might not even realize. Dynasty's allure lies not only in the opulence it portrays, but in the mirror it holds up to our own desires, ambitions, and yearnings. As the curtains fall on our musings, I extend an invitation to you, dear reader, to share your own personal tapestry of dynasty. What moments have etched themselves into your memory? Which characters resonate with your soul? What lessons have you carried forward from their opulent world into your own? Your stories, your insights, your perspectives, they enrich the legacy of this series and make it a living, breathing entity that transcends time. So, as you step away from these words and back into the rhythm of life, take with you the echoes of Dynasty's allure, the whispers of its drama, and the echoes of its timeless message. Thank you for embarking on this reflective journey with me. Your time and interest are the sparks that keep the flame of connection alive. Until we meet again amidst the glitz and glamour of another tale, Remember that the echoes of Dynasty's intrigue linger in the spaces between your own adventures.